Oh my god. This looks terrible. If you're an artist, you've definitely gone through periods where you haven't liked anything you've been able to create where you think that your art sucks and no matter how hard you try, every single new piece that you create ends up disappointing you. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some tips that I've used to get myself out of this funk in the past and actually make art that I like. But first off, we need to talk about something. If you're watching this, you're probably equating your self-worth to your art, and every time that you make a painting that you don't like, you're telling yourself that you're a bad person, that you're a bad artist, and that you're never going to improve, and that maybe your following on social media or your aspirations to become a full-time artist are just not gonna happen, and that you're being too naive or optimistic, and what you're doing is equating your self-worth to the quality of your art, and that is a surefire way to have one hell of a roller coaster ride with your mental health. Your self-worth is not equal to the quality of art that you create. You could stop painting, drawing, charcoaling, sculpting, whatever you do, and I promise that you would still have worth as a human being. Your worth as a person isn't related to the art that you create. It's sure, it's a good thing about you. It's a good hobby that you have. It's a good personality trait, but it's not linked to your self-worth. You need to stop doing that, okay? I paint so many absolute garbage paintings. And if you quit when you're bad at something, if you quit when you have stacks and stacks of disappointments, then you're never going to actually reach a point where you do feel good about your art. And the first thing that you need to do is to stop equating your self-worth with your art and then you'll gain back that objectivity to look at your art and actually accurately identify what went wrong with each piece. And for my second tip, maybe this is just me, but the surefire way for me to be unsatisfied with the piece is to work with a subpar overly complex reference photo. You'd be really surprised at the amount of impact a bad reference photo can have on your piece as you work. If something's overly complicated, the lighting isn't quite right, it's going to really affect your ability to effectively render that subject. And when I'm experiencing this, when this is happening to me, I like to take a step back and actually take my own reference photos for a change. By taking my own reference photos, I'm able to gain control over the entire process of creation and to actually be really excited about the piece that you're about to create. And I promise it's so much more of a rewarding experience to be really excited about the painting when you're taking the reference photo all the way to having the piece completed. If you're not feeling like going out and taking your own reference photos right now, consider painting something that's already in your camera roll. If you've gone on vacation in the past few years, not that any of us have in the past year, but if you've gone on road trips, if you've taken photos of the sunset in the Burger King parking lot in your hometown that you thought was really pretty, paint that. Paint things that you're really excited about again, things that you really enjoy, and I guarantee you're probably going to have more fun painting the piece even if you like the way that it turns out. And my third tip to breaking out of this funk is to do timed painting practice. If you're used to oil painting, then you're probably used to spending days or even weeks on a painting. And I would really encourage you to shake things up a little bit and limit yourself to one to two hours to the painting from start to finish. This will really force you to get out of your own head, which I found at least is really instrumental for me actually liking the painting because I often make bad decisions when I overthink things. And by going through each stage of the art making process from the beginning to the intermediate stage to the end, you'll actually be able to gain more experience and get to know the parts where you fail the most and how to actually improve at that. Oh, sorry, my air conditioner just turned off, so it's going to be a little bit of an audio change. But my fourth tip is to do a study of a painting that you really love. I've noticed at least that I've been able to gain a more significant improvement in my skills faster. The more that I study less from like reference photos to photos of paintings. By doing a study of a painting itself, you can really notice specific techniques, specific actionable steps that will improve your skills, or at least your ability to render certain things. Like for example, I've been doing studies of various artists and how they paint clouds. And I've noticed that when I paint clouds myself, I fall back on those skills that I learned doing those studies and I'm able to far more accurately represent clouds the way that I really want to. I think studying other artists' work, obviously don't copy them, don't try to sell their paintings as your own, this is just an educational experience, but you gain so much in knowledge and specific actionable technique the more that you study these other artists and learn how they paint certain things. And my fifth and final tip is just to take a break. Sometimes what you need most is just to go out and live life and immerse yourself in the world, in nature. Go take a walk, go watch that movie that you've been meaning to watch, and go spend time with your friends and your family and your loved ones, and I promise, I promise, the inspiration to create will come back. Sometimes forcing yourself to create is only going to result in more disappointment, and what you really need is just to 
take a break. Give yourself a week off and then come back to the studio, come back to your workspace when you are rested, when you feel inspired again. And the work that you create after you take a break is probably going to be much more satisfying for you. It's probably going to be better in quality. And at the very least, you'll be more inspired and you'll be less emotional and more willing to look at a painting that's a failure and analyze why it was a failure and what you can do better. And if you liked this video, but you're still experiencing insecurity and art block, consider watching this video right here, where I talk all about how I'm trying to cure my own burnout and I'll see you there.